What I can show and share with people is what we do in Soraco in our mining operation. So for instance, uh, one of the biggest issues is deforestation in mining. So in Soraco, we are now having a reforestation and reclamation program, not only inside our mining operation, but also outside the boundary of our operation. So today we are running a multi-year program. We have already reforested about two and a half times of the size of the area that we have opened for 54 years in our mining operation. And we are embarking the second phase now. In the next three to four years, we will be reforest almost five times of the area that we have opened for when, during our mining operations for the 54 years. That alone is already a net positive in terms of reforestation and deforestation. And then the second point I'd like to highlight is also one of the major recent challenges with our mining is actually the effluent water coming from the mine. So we have more than 100 sediment ponds to treat the water and then at the end of the day the water is discharged to the uh, Matano Lake. Matano Lake is very close to our operation side by side but we can prove to people after 54 years of operations the quality of the water in Matano Lake is actually super pristine and I myself and the community we drink the water from the lake. So it's one of couple, this is a couple of examples of how we see, you know, things can be done in a good way in mining. Today, Soraco operations, uh, we have three hydro dams. So we'll build and operate uh, three hydro dams. So our smelter today, our furnace today is 100% powered by hydropower, which bring us to be the smelter, red carrier smelter in Indonesia with the lowest carbon intensity. However, despite this fact, we're still emitting a lot of carbon. So we feel the responsibility to decarbonize ourselves as we decarbonize the others. So we are embarking journey of reductions of our carbon. So to, last year in Glasgow, uh, COP26, we announced publicly our carbon reduction roadmap. And this year, COP27, I presented again the progress, actions and progress, because we know people are, the, are tired of just plan and promise. So we need to show actions and progress. So now we have our energy redu uh, carbon emissions reductions roadmap and we are making progress. One of the big next five years focus is actually to transition from currently coal and fuel into gas, LNG gas. I understand there's a lot of debate about gas as well, but for our industry, hard to debate, we have not many options. At this point in time, the proven technology that is available on, in front of us is transition to gas. So when we are debating about whether or not we do transitions today or not, we have two options. You either do nothing, you wait until the next 15, 20 years hoping that there will be a solution or you actually do something today, make a decision knowing it's not a perfect solution, but then along the way, it buys you time to work on the ultimate solution. At this point in time, our technology team have looked at hydrogen. We believe it will take time to develop. So do we wait until hydrogen become a viable option and do nothing today or choose to do something today and then Along the way, you know, while you reduce your emission car we reduce our emission carbons, we wait for that solution. If that solution become a possibility, then we can also shift over. That way we make progress instead of making promise. Mining industry in general has suffered from a long period of underinvestment. Because really for mineral, for instance, the price has been low. It's only recent years it's actually picked up, right? Um, and also typically mining projects takes time to develop, right? Years of period of time to develop a mining project and actually deliver the productions required. But in, in Valley, for instance, we, there is, like in Indonesia, in Valley, in our concession, there is a lot of uh, nickels, right? So one of the things that we try to do uh, to, to still respond uh, well, because our view is unprecedented level of demand need to have unprecedented level of supply response. So we cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting different outcomes. So in our case, we're trying to relook at ourselves. What can we do differently so we can respond better to this good opportunity, great opportunity of demand, right? So a few things that we're doing, for instance, we foster collaborations and partnership rather than competition. And today we are cooperating and partnering with company that used to be our competitor. Our belief is there is so much demand out there. There is no need for competition. We need more collaboration than competition. And second, we need more agility in making decisions and risk mitigation. Because if we keep having the same mindset, then there will be no different outcome. So there's a lot of way of looking at things and partnering and seeing way of, you know, way out in the middle ground, right? And also I like to reinforce again, you may not be able to make a perfect decision. Make decision based on what you have today and then work out the hopefully the perfect outcome, right? And the third one is, of course, um, we need support from government because these sectors, you know, it involves a lot of um, issues with 
legal, social and also family. So support from government to allow us to be able to change and respond quickly is very, very important. We are now in, right in the middle of these discussions with government as we are embarking you know, at three greenfield projects. We will quadruple our productions in the next few years. So we need investment certainty and we also need uh, you know, a lot of uh, support from government. So one of the uh, sentiments now is resources nationalism, right? Uh, but in our dialogues with government, we said that, look, uh, help us, right? We want to do this, we want to do that. And we will bring a lot of value and benefit to Indonesia with where we operate today. So I think we're trying to change the dialogue now that resources nationalism is not about ownership. It's about what value you bring to the country. So once you stop thinking about what value you created and bring to the country, it's dramatically changed the conversation. Of course, we haven't proved ourselves yet because we're still in the middle of that discussions and negotiation. We hope that we can still really open the mindset of everyone that these global transitions, energy transition, need all of us to collaborate and work together. How do we work together? At the end of the day, my feeling is the ownership discussion in resources nationalism is because the country wants to have more. That's okay, it's very fair. If you own the resources, you want the value, right? So let's focus on the value discussions. What can we bring to the table? So it's a win-win solution for everyone. So I hope we can manage through this <laughs> challenge uh, in the next few years.